Now that we develop perturbation theory, let's apply it to the helium atom. You may recall the helium atom could not be solved exactly using the Schrodinger equation. It's a three-body problem. The uh, problem came when you have the electron-electron interaction, that Coulombic repulsion between the electrons, and that screwed everything up. But let's try to uh, get an approximate description of the helium atom. In particular, we want to know what the energy is, the corrected energy. All right, as we said, we start with the Hamiltonian. We divide that into two parts, one H zero. That's the Hamiltonian whose uh, eigenvectors and eigenfunctions we know. We know the wave functions and energy. And then we add on to that Hamiltonian, a perturbation Hamiltonian, uh, which is the thing that you can pull out. And ideally, the perturbation is small uh, compared to this. All right, meaning it's a small correction to the energy compared to the energy you get from the unperturbed Hamiltonian. Now for the helium atom, you may recall that we had kinetic energy and potential energy for the first electron. That's what that subscript 1 means. And then we had kinetic energy plus potential energy for the second electron. That's what subscript 2 means. And then we had this uh, pesky term here. This was the interaction between the electrons, which depended upon the distance r12 between the two electrons. Well, let's actually go ahead and um, solve the Schrodinger equation for this unperturbed uh, Hamiltonian. So let me just write that as um, the Hamiltonian 0, unperturbed. That's equal to uh, minus uh, h bar squared over 2 times the mass of the electron, or maybe we should use the reduced mass electron plus the nucleus, but let's assume for now that the uh, nucleus is not moving at all. And then we have that electrostatic term, uh, 2e squared. That 2 comes about because the charge on the nucleus of the helium atom is plus 2. And we'll use these uh, SI units, 4 pi epsilon naught r1. So these, um, and this is del squared, forgot the del squared here. I'll put that in. Important to have del squared there. All right. So this part of the Hamiltonian depends only on the coordinates of electron 1. And then we have that second electron, minus h bar squared over 2 times the mass of the electron times del for the second electron squared, minus 2 e squared over 4 pi epsilon naught. And this is r2, the coordinates of the second electron. That's what our unperturbed Hamiltonian is. Well, all we have to, we may recognize this as just the sum of two independent terms. The electrons don't interact, so it's as if the first electron doesn't really care about the second and vice versa. So we can divide the, um, the wave function for this, or actually we can uh, write the wave function for this as the wave function for that first electron. And I'll put a zero there, indicating it corresponds to that uh, zero order Hamiltonian. And then we multiply that by the wave function for the second electron. So we just separate out variables. These, we can, Hamiltonian separates out nicely in variables. So we have that. And then, of course, if we have independent electrons, they don't interact. The total energy, and I'll put uh, subscript 0 here to indicate the zero order energy. We're not applying a perturbation yet. This is just uh, the energy of the first electron plus the energy of the second electron. So generally wave functions multiply and energies add when you separate out variables. Okay. So we know what the solutions here is. Uh, we can modify the ones we got for the hydrogen atom by including um, a term Z which indicates the charge in the nucleus and for the um, helium nucleus that Z is equal to 2. So I'll just write these down here uh, 2 pi a cubed. This is from the hydrogen atom lecture, which is the three halves, e to the minus 2r1 over a. And that's what um, psi 1 ground state or unperturbed will be. And then psi 2 will be similar. It'll be 2 over uh, pi. These are just constants, a cubed raised to the three halves power, e to the minus 2 are uh, 2 second electron coordinates divided by a. And this, by the way, we're doing the ground state for helium, which means that each electron 
is a 1s electron. So we just pull out of that table the wave function for the 1s electron, it's that. The wave function for 1s electron is that. We know we can have two electrons in the 1s orbital. So there, we have that uh, wave function for the unperturbed system. And then for the energy of the unperturbed system, well, we can modify the um, energies to take into account one electron systems that uh, have different nuclear charges. So in that case, the energy is equal to, remember for the hydrogen atom, it's minus the Rydberg constant divided by n squared, but the ground state n is equal to 1. And what you put here, a z squared, where that is a charge on the electron, a uh, charge on the nucleus, still have a one electron. Even though we have two electrons going around the helium nucleus, they're not interacting in this uh, unperturbed Hamiltonian, so we can treat those separately. So that would just be equal to four times the Rydberg constant, ground state n equal one. So that will be four. This would be, by the way, the energy of electron one. This would be four times, uh, let's see, the Rydberg is uh, 2.118 uh, times 10 to the minus 18th joule. And so E2 will be a, the exact same thing because those electrons don't interact. Joule. So that the, before we apply that perturbation, the um, energy of the system is uh, 1.744 times 10 to the minus 17th joule. All right, so that's with no perturbation. It'd be interesting to compare this with the exact one that you measure experimentally. So the exact E of the um, electrons in a helium atom experimentally, and by the way, that's minus so I forgot the minus sign here. I keep forgetting those minus signs. Boy, those are kind of pesky, aren't they? Uh, the energy measured experimentally is minus 1.265 times 10 to the minus 17th joule. So yeah, same order of magnitude, but this is considerably um, off from the actual experimental measurement. What does that mean? Well, that means that that perturbation Hamiltonian uh, this is actually not small compared to that. It's, um, why don't we actually look at it here? It's, um, oh, you know, what, 30% uh, or so. Well, let's see. Anyway, it's large. All right, so there's a comparison. So what we're going to do is apply perturbation theory to get a correction to this energy, this calculated energy, and we hope it'll become closer to the exact energy if we're doing the perturbation correctly. All right, so how are we going to do that perturbation? Well, oh, that's interesting, something left over. Uh, perturbation, let's see, we said that the perturbation to the energy, that's the first order perturbation. I guess we're using a, uh, no compare, okay, so we'll use a superscript to, to note first order perturbation. That is equal to, remember it's the wave function of the zero order times the uh, operating with that perturbed Hamiltonian times the wave function of the zero order. And we said what we know with the wave function of zero orders, uh, that is equal to, let's see, what's that equal to? Um, there it is. This is the wave function for the first electron, the wave function for the elect second electron, the total wave function then will be the product of those two. Um, psi one, zero, zero times psi uh, two zero. All right, so we know what that is. And we'll actually, if you actually multiply that out, let's see, this would be that cubed e to the minus two r one over a, e to the minus two r two over a. All right, so, all right, so let's actually do this integral. We'll change from this notation to the integral notation. So this would be an integral, and we're gonna integrate uh, twice, actually, one for each variable of, I'll just write down what these are. This would be two over pi a cubed raised to the three halves. Um, actually, we're going to square that. So that will be raised to the uh, cubed here, here. This is e to the minus two r one over a 
e to the minus 2 r2 over a. And then we have that perturbation Hamiltonian. We're going to put that down here. That's e squared over 4 pi epsilon naught r12. That's the distance between the nuclei. So we're, there's a perturbation. We're just writing that in. We're doing this integral. And then over here, then that's complex conjugate, but there's no i in here, so we don't have to worry about that. And we write that again, 2 over uh, pi a cubed, cubed, e to the minus 2 r1 over a, e to the minus 2 r2 over a. And this is integrated over the first uh, electron and then the second electron, d tau 1, d tau 2. All right, so there it is, and that's the integral you have to solve. These constants will come out. Uh, now you have a problem here. This is R1 and R2 independent, but here this is the difference between the two. And so what I, um, what you can do is solve this. It's pretty complex. You can probably look it up on the internet. Um, if you, well, just let me say, let's put the dots here. So we won't solve it. You won't be responsible for it. But what it ends up is, is this first order correction to the energy is 10 over 8 times um, e squared over 4 pi epsilon naught a0. That comes out to be a positive number, 5.44 times 10 to the minus 18th in SI units, that's joule. So there's the first order correction to the energy of the helium atom. So now our energy to first order is E0, that one we calculated before, plus this first order correction. So the one we calculated before was, let me look that up, uh, minus 1.744 times 10 to the minus 17th joule plus 5.44 times 10 to the minus 18th joule. And that comes out to be uh, one point or minus and the exact is 1.265 times 10 to the minus 17th joule. So it looks like the correction uh, made the energy of the helium atom, that first order correction, uh, come more close to the actual measured experimental value. So it looks like uh, perturbation theory works. It probably, we probably would have got a better value if the perturbation had not been so large. All right, so perturbation works and um, here it is, uh, this is the zeroth. That's you, you add these two things up and you get something that's very close to the experimental measurement. All right, so you know sometimes the integrals get a little hairy and uh, there are a couple ways to do that. One is to expand this in spherical harmonics. The other is to recognize for electricity and magnetism that this is a, um, a charge uh, and it uh, runs out as a sphere. Go, it decays Z to minus R1, and this is a charge, decays Z to minus I2, and you got overlapping charges, and classical electricity and magnetism uh, can solve this also. But without going into those details, there's a first order correction. It looks like we um, it worked pretty well.